today uh, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll take a couple of practical cases uh, uh, related to dates in tableau so these are the cases where uh, normally the difficult challenges related to dates that we face across in tableau and uh, uh, for my uh, from my experience in some of the earlier projects uh so these pra- these cases uh, i've also faced and uh, uh, today we'll explore how to solve these cases in tableau so first uh, case being uh, let me explain the problem here so let's say you have a trend line first let me talk about some trend line okay uh, uh, uh let's get into the data a little later uh, we have a some trend line and some measure that is being uh, plotted over 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 time right now i want to see uh, uh based on the selection okay each point is for a particular month when i select a particular month i should be able to uh it's loading okay uh, i should be able to see uh, what is the month over month growth for the selected point on a separate sheet we can enable this thing in a tooltip or as a label that is that can be doable but if you want to show that only for a selected point in a separate sheet then how how it can be done now it looks simple but why it's not simple what's the issue or uh, let me explain here so when you talk about when you click something or when you hover on something it needs to reflect in another sheet you're talking about tableau dashboard actions right now the ash actions that work here is a filter action so when you click on a certain point only the data related to that particular point will reflect in all the target sheets so for example whatever the month december 2020 59 only that particular value will be uh, filtered uh, from all the rest of the data will be filtered out only this data will be there but for you in order to calculate month over month growth you need two values right you need the Uh, value for the previous month f- uh, uh, for whatever the month that you have selected only then you will be able to do this calculation and show this percentage now how we can achieve that uh, is let let's see so <clears throat> there are multiple ways again to achieve this thing uh, we can uh, get it done using table calculations uh, you can uh, write a uh, 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 some other uh, ways as well like for example you can take a date as a parameter and do some uh, complex calculated fields in order to achieve this value but those are all time taking process and complex ways um, and any further change once you go ahead in those processes it 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 okay it will work but if any further change that you have to make any small change it will take a lot of time from you or it will restrict you from uh, adapting the dashboard to any further changes modifications so the simple way here is uh, let's see how we can do it it's basically uh, something called unequal joins so basically what we do is let me now let's come to the data okay this is some uh, uh some random data it's not uh, uh real data it's a fictional data let's see what it says it talks about um yeah actually this. so we have uh a nice we have uh data related to certain machines that were planned okay we have machine identifier machine id and when the when is this particular machine is supposed to start uh, so all these are future dates 2020 2257 something like that and how uh when is this machine is supposed to end who are the uh, uh who is the crew member related to that machine mission status etc uh etc a, a lot, lot of other details related to each of those mission uh, uh, missions okay now the metric that we are pl- trying to plot is this one on hand fuel so for that particular mission what was the on hand fuel let's not get into the meaning of it but uh, that's not relevant for this exercise as of now so that is the data that we have and 
the task that we are trying to achieve is uh, basically So if you see this particular month, okay, uh, so on this date, mission start date, we want to know this particular value and compare it with the year over year growth, right? So, uh, so we have mission start date. So now the task is when you plot across a month, there could be multiple missions that start on a particular month, right? Now you have to take all the uh, on-hand fuel for all those missions that are starting in a particular month and then grab the previous month related to whatever the month you're uh, selecting and take the sum of all uh, all the previous months uh, hand, on-hand fuel and do the calculation there. <laughs> But the task here is we don't have the previous month uh, related information in the data. We need to get that some, uh, somehow on here itself. For example, let's assume in this particular month, there is only one mission, okay? And uh, the sum of uh, the metric that you would plot on the y-axis would be this much, 0 0.044. And this is on, uh, on this particular year in month of June, right? Now you want to get the May's data as well. Now, how would you get it? Um, it's easy if you have the May's data as a separate column in here, right? So this is the current month value. If you have last month value as a separate column here, then you will be able to easily make what is the uh, month over month calculation as a new calculated field. That, 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 that's the technique that we are trying to uh, arrive at. But in order to get that previous month value as a separate column, what we need to do, let's see. So all I have to do is, let's say this is my data. Uh, source in the tableau i'll just duplicate this data source and i'll join i'll create a join between these two itself so on what basis i'll uh, I, I can either i can create a join or i can do a blending so since i'm at this point in time let's go with the blending okay uh, what i'll do is uh, from on the created uh, data uh, base the copied database duplicated one i'll go ahead and uh, since I'm going with the mission start field, I'll rename this field, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll tell why I'm renaming this. Uh, I'll just keep it as old mission start date. And I'll create a new calculated field saying it says a mission start date. Mission start. And I'll write a calculation date at subtract one month from the old mission start date now if you see both the data sources are same so the old mission start data uh, column in this particular data set and the earlier data set will be same now what i'm doing is i'm just subtracting one month from this uh, duplicated data source uh so mission start date uh, uh, Jagdish, it's minus one instead of uh actually it will work let uh, i'll tell you how it's okay. a, uh data uh it's it's not actually subtracting it's a plus only so we are not going actually uh, backward we can we are going actually forward okay uh we, we, we will we'll do this and we'll click okay so now uh all i have to do is i'll come to my original data source i'll take my mission start date 
and the little bit click put this here to see what's happening Uh, let me blend these two so uh, whenever you blend two data sets in the tab blue it will ask for a relation so whatever the red connection is there uh, those two data sets are being related on that particular field uh, <coughs> so uh, th this is the reason why i renamed the old mission start uh, rename the earlier mission start date and uh, rename the created calculated field as mission start so it will blend on the adjusted date so I'll now I'll pull this one and put it here. Okay, not that. So what it basically does is, uh, let me plot this. data source and pull my on hand field from here as well. Right. So if you see, observe these two plots. So one is coming from the uh, uh, basically the shifted date where we added one month and hour. So that is the first one. And the original one is the bottom one. If you see the trend, the trend everything is saying just the uh, it, it has been shifted by one point. So whatever you see in the earlier month here, uh, now you see in the second month in the uh, uh, duplicated data source. Now, all you have to do is, since you have this blended two data sets, you, you can use these two values to get the year over year calculation. So on here for January, uh, for February uh, 2257, this is coming from the original data set. You have from the blended data source, you have the January value. OK, 
ओके सॉरी दिस वन द जनवरी वैल्यू सो यू कैन बेसिकली सब्ट्रैक्ट दिस वन एंड दिस वन ऑन द फेब्रवरी टू गेट द मंथ ओवर मंथ कैलकुलेशन सो लेट्स सो दैट्स सिंपल लेट मी क्रिएट अनदर कैलकुलेशन हियर एंड क्रिएट द कैलकुलेटर टू so this is from the primary data source and you will go to your secondary data source and pull the on hand fuel from here so it lot will detect from its coming from the secondary data source and this is the calculation that you are all aware of here month or month of calculation and again divide it by the same to get the calculation is done and uh, once this calculation is done you can uh, you don't need this graph anymore so we will remove this so this would be your main graph in the sheet 24 what you do is you create that calculate uh, month or month calculation to the text so so yeah for january 20 since it's a starting month we don't have any prior month so it's not calculated here uh, but for, for all the rest of the months it was calculated now all you have to do is create a dashboard uh, with with sheet 23 and sheet 24 and create an action here uh, thereby it will only show one particular for the one particular selected month so from sheet 23 you create a sheet 24 action uh, i don't know if you Oh yeah, we will will enable the action to work on select on click, and uh, yeah, that's it. And once you select a certain point, it will show. Uh, we can format this particular point. Uh, let's click here and click format. Percentage dashboard. So if you see, so this particular December. in this month we have 22% growth over the last month and if you click here uh, there was a 18% drop from the previous month hope this was clear if you have any questions let me know before we move to the next one okay uh wait uh so the another normal uh, uh main challenge that we come across while working on dates is uh this one uh, coming to the second challenge so think of a uh, uh, again let's have a quick look at the data uh if we see here there is a mission end date and a mission start date let's assume let's take a scenario where you have want to find you will specify a certain date and you want to count all of the active missions in on the as on that date okay uh, a mission is said to be an active if if the chosen date by uh, by the user is falls between the mission start date and end date okay that mission has to be counted as active and rest all should be counted as inactive now the problem with achieving such uh, that task is we only have for each mission we only have the start date and end date okay now how do we get let's assume um, uh, the, the first mission or the first row the mission starts on 9th uh, sorry 7th of um, uh, september and uh, closes on 13th of september now if a person selects 10th of september the 10th of september is not at all related to from the data source point of view it's not at all related to this particular mission id uh, there's no way we can get it uh, related because uh we the, the data this particular mission is only related with start and uh, end date but when a person selects that particular 10th month uh, so 10th uh, uh, day of the september uh how we can relate uh, uh showing uh, this particular mission is also active and you should count this so again multiple ways to achieve this you can you have to uh, you can get it done uh, with table calculations or advanced uh some calculated fields but it will again take a lot of time one other easy way is uh 
something called uh, some some idea called a enumerated date okay uh, let me explain what it what it is so the idea is uh, this so for each mission uh, uh, we know that there is a start date and end date but we will uh, join all the dates between those start date and end date uh, for each of those missions so thereby whatever the date you, you choose uh, uh, for uh, for that particular day if that mi- mission is active it will be related to that in a data set so we have this particular column uh, as a separate data set which we have uh, where we have each and every single day from the uh, first mission start date to the last mission end date so all the days will be uh, given in this particular data set and let's see how we can uh, use that to get what we want so all you have to do is you have to go into um, create a new sheet add a data source let's join this So we have mission data here, start and end date. So now I'll add a connection to my the enumerated dates data set, and I'll join this table. Okay. I'll join this table with the earlier data set based on the conditions in that. So the condition is uh, we have a start date and end date. On the start dates data set, we have a date column. Now we are allowing that user to select a date column that is coming from this secondary uh, connection that we had. So based on that, we need to show all the uh, uh, missions that were active on that day. So basically, what we have to do is if a uh, uh, mission start date, let me put the logic. If a mission start date is less than the date that was selected by the user then give me that mission and also check another condition saying that if a mission end date this has to be greater than the the date that was selected by the user now let's see what it has done to our database earlier we had only one mission per row but there was no duplication if we see now uh, for the first six to seven rows we have some duplication data and this is because this particular mission has started on uh, september 7th and ended on september 13th of a certain year now there are from 7 to 13 there are seven days and for all of these seven days the date column if you see here uh, 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so Whatever the days in between the start and end date, there is a uh, for, for a mission. All the dates has been added. So whenever a per, uh, now a person chooses any date in between, now as uh, we are talking earlier, September 10th. Now this mission, uh, this part, this particular mission uh, will be uh, uh, what we say. He will be able to will be able to show. Hey, this particular mission is also active on that day. Hope the logic that was clear. Uh, it was clear here. Now it's all about uh, taking using this particular date uh, for for, uh, for in, in Tableau rather than the mission start or end date. So we'll put this here. And let's only uh, select for, since there are a lot of years, we can only select for one year of data to understand it better. 
and count distinct of mission ID will give me all the missions that were present on that day. Okay, now let's compare this with the actual one. If I had to create mission start date without the logic, let's see what happens. And mission ID is If you see in this particular graph where there was no logic, so if you see the number never reaches zero for, for first. Uh, and it will only take into account the days which were uh, present in the data set. If you see, if you observe these two particular marks, uh, there is no, there is supposed to be day 8. Uh, but since there was no mission that was started on that particular day, uh, it was not present in the data set. So, so but we'll use the selects, uh, we will not be able to say how many active uh, missions uh, are present as on that day will not be able to select first, first of all that day only and the other uh, issue with this approach is uh, you may have the last for example the x-axis here is mission start date right a mission there, uh, there and this is the last mission start date so this is the date on which there were the last mission got started but there were multiple missions that got started earlier which may not have ended up until this date which may have, might have carried on to be uh, active even after this date and uh, we will not be able to see what those missions are uh, when we take a, a mission start date uh, uh, when we go with this approach so these are the normal problems that happen um, when you are working with dates but here we see uh, the 6 and 8 so here uh, earlier this, this particular mark was missing and here we got it and we are also able to see the number of active uh, pro proper trend line rather than uh, only the missions that are starting on that day. Hope this was clear and normally this particular uh, case occurs when you are working on a transactional or log based data. So when a person logs in, uh, there, there is a record for that log. But when a person doesn't log, there is no record for that log and it's uh, it will be difficult for us to analyze those sort of uh, data and this sort of mechanism where we can uh, use uh, uh, blending uh, to rejoin the data set with the uh, same data set or uh, creating an enum enumerated date uh, to get all the dates uh, that were missing in a data set uh, will, will help you solve those cases. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Regarding that enumerated date, for example, assume a case where uh, the data gets updated weekly or monthly, like you add a separate sheets mm -hmm. of enumerated dates, right? Yes. So will that get updated automatically or like how? Yeah, this sheet. Uh, I didn't understand the question. Was it uh, uh, like if it's on a weekly basis, what will happen? Hmm. Yeah, something like that. So okay. currently see at, the, at this point in time um, yeah we are looking at a date day level uh, dates but let's assume that you're working on a week level granularity you don't uh, have to drill down to day level then instead of day level you have to just go with the week level enumeration so uh, keep every week so instead of one one you'll keep uh, one one and one two you'll have one one and one seven so for oh, yeah. week. Not that one actually. For example, currently this sheet will have dates till maybe we'll assume a case till November. Right. Okay. Okay. In how will data how gets updated? Yeah. Understood. So the task is you can uh, you have to make use of SQL functions here. So what okay. you have to do is you can create dynamic views in SQL. So based on the current date, it will keep on populating and uh, the this date column with additional values. I think okay so those are the two uh, cases that I had for today 